Day one of biking across the US complete. We are setting up camp in the middle of somewhere in Oregon. The day started with yogurt and granola. Then we went over to the ocean, half a mile away, touched our toes and our bikes in it. Pacific City, Oregon is beautiful. And then we started biking. And we just uh, yeah, kept biking. That's kind of all we did. That's what we're gonna do. Just me biking with some flowers and. Oregon has all these nice bridges and rivers that we got to experience. A lot of biking. Here's me biking and falling off the bike because I can try to film. Um, no, no one was harmed. And we made it all the way to camp somehow with our bikes. So here's my dad in the background. I'm cooking something. Stats for people, 102 miles, 13.8 miles per hour. And that's a wrap. Day two of biking across the US with my dad. We're right there. Good day today. Kind of drama. A lot of drama, actually. So I'll let you know. And the recap starting Late now. start, we were hiking out of our campsite. Kind of a rugged hike, honestly. And then started biking through the mountains of Oregon. Beautiful. This is supposed to be attached. My dad tried to fix yeah, it. We, we just said, nope, we're going to ride with a broken spoke. And then kept riding with a broken spoke. And it somehow held up. The next bike shop was 60 miles away. We are thinking about hitchhiking, but wanted to ride up this epic pass, which is most of the ride today. We're just going up and up. Woo! Across the Pacific Crest Trail, did not see Eliza Stowe, unfortunately. We made it the 60 miles to the bike shop in Sisters, Oregon. Problem solved. And also, we got some amazing food. Chicken and macaroni and cheese. <laughs> This was the final route. Strava post, stats for the nerds. And now it's time to get some quality sleep in our beautiful campsite. And that's a wrap. Day three, finished. Finishing up my chicken payoff. This man ate quick. He's already done. Kind of a pretty spot. We're maybe like 4,500 feet elevation. Here's the highlights. First and foremost, we got groceries, the essentials. And we started biking. We were on one road most of the day, and it was easy and great. It was a random lake. They had some dams along the way on this little creek. That slowly got smaller and smaller the farther we went. I got a flat tire, but we fixed it because we're on bikes. And there's me with my fixed flat tire, cruising along in some wind. We had a lot of hill climbing. It was kind of just a flat and then a big old hill what goes up must come down here's a clip of me zooming down we're going 30 miles an hour for probably seven miles and then some rice pork and peppers for dinner delicious a little under 90 miles 13.1 miles per hour some stats for the nerds and that's a wrap it is the end of day four. I am in the tent hiding from mosquitoes. There's no phone signal. In Bates State Park in Bates, Oregon. With my chow mein ham and steamed broccoli. daddy -o is working on his chow mein. It was a calm morning. Broke camp. Good scenery. Got to biking. It was a bit of climbing at first and then tons of downhill. That was 20 miles per hour on the Garmin right there. Me making it look easy. Dad making it look easy. We went through maybe five ecosystems today. And thank God for beef. Jerky. This was such a good break. Tasted so good. Sure, it's super hot here in John Day, Oregon, but these Bolt House Farm smoothies are keeping us cool. It was 80s and sunny. <laughs> My dad looking epic here. See the mountains in the background? We then climbed thousands of feet to get this beautiful view. Then we did a little bit more climbing and then a quick descent to get to our final campsite, Bates State Park. Here's the route, 96 miles, some stats for the nerds, 14 miles per hour. And that's a wrap. Day five, biking across the whole United States of America. Amazing breakfast, then biking. And we learned when it says chain up area, that means they're gonna be hills. So here's us going up the hill, mountain time, down the hill. Oh, we felt good. Even better when we saw 6% down for five miles. I risked my life to get this shot. I probably went 35 miles per hour. So I hope you like it. We saw so many cows and calves and calves. 
Here's one of our shade breaks in an abandoned building. Here's another shade break in a barn. It was a good stop. This spot right here where we're camping used to be part of the Oregon Trail. There are hot springs in town, so people would stop here to get a hot bath. Ben's original ready rice. Which we ate because we biked 89 miles today. Some stats for all the nerds out there. And that's a wrap. Day six of biking across the United States is done, and it's only 3.30 p.m. because that's a rest day. We're in a hotel. He's doing laundry. Here are the highlights. Neither of us slept well, partly because there was a rainstorm from a sprinkler pointed right at the pavilion. That's what those puddles are for. My sleep-deprived self was still able to enjoy the skate park, though. We honestly did not see that sign. It was a five mile climb leaving Vail, which honestly is pretty normal. It's what we do every single morning at this point. 10 miles of negative percent grade on smooth, quiet road. My dad's commenting on the potatoes in the background here, which we passed a lot of because we are now in Idaho. This is the Snake River. It's actually the border a little farther north, not where we crossed, but good enough. You get the idea. I'm trying to keep the spirit of rest day. Bolt House Farms, please sponsor us. I love our mid-afternoon smoothie stop. The suburbs of Boise, Idaho have not been very bikeable and they also weren't walkable. After we got to the hotel, we decided to walk to get some food and here's us not getting hit by cars. You should go to Holy Cow in Nampa if you can. And back at the hotel, we found the washing machine. Now we're just hanging out. I am wearing pants here and there happens to be a storm brewing that we get to avoid and not get wet. A total of 56 miles today. Here's some stats for you nerds. And that's a wrap. Day seven, biking across the United States. We started with continental breakfast, then with this downhill sign, which I've come to love because you get beautiful views and high speeds. It was pretty hot, but Idaho Farms were offering free showers today. They were also offering free thorns to pop your tube, so I put some sticky stuff on there, then I slapped a patch on, called it good. I'm probably gonna buy a downhill sign as decor. The cars out here in Idaho have been really nice to us getting in the other lane. To get all that downhill, we needed some uphill, a fair amount of uphill. It was a lot of uphill, and it was pretty hot. But if you noticed, there are no trees in sight, so we took some breaks in the shade of a bathroom talking about Bolt House Farms. We got some unintentional shade later with scary rain clouds, but those clouds weren't half as scary as this killer right here. Here's some cows for the city folk, and then some more climbing through the Morley Nelson Snake River Birds of Prey National Conservation Area. That's a mouthful. Another downhill! This one, we we're getting kind of blasted by the wind, and the wind kept blasting us. persevered we snaked across the snake river and then we ended up in a church lawn eating the best dinner known to man here was our route 99 miles today some stats for the nerds but an awesome last minute turn of events rick offered a shower in his camper that's where we are now day eight of biking across the united states is done my dad's washing off we're camped behind a church and it's quiet and peaceful here in the morning we said goodbye to abby did some chain maintenance and left hammett idaho today got a little spicy we did a quick grocery shop and a breakfast stop no bolt house farms today but they're sending me some to our denver stop the snake river is beautiful you really come to love city parks on bike tours water plus bathrooms equals comfort then the wind picked up and the clouds got darker and darker and darker until we were sheltered in a different city park from the 30 mile per hour winds rain and hail the storm lit up after an hour we made our way past the Chibani factory and started looking for a place to camp. We tried the high school, but there was a huge event happening. We asked a cop, and she suggested a place that was five miles away. So we ended up at a church that was actually pretty nice. We made our Spanish rice, tuna, and pepper for dinner. If you have any dinner suggestions that are packable, let us know. And then we called it a night. 87 miles today, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. Day nine of biking across the entire United States. Complete, we made it to Utah. Now we're drying off for some rain that passed through. We started off the day with our morning oatmeal, then we headed east. It was cooler today. I told dad no to the massive bag of Skittles because we definitely don't have room for that. But we still got Bolt House Farms and some loaded turkey sandwiches. The sign said occasional blinding dust storms, but those storms off past my dad did not look that dusty. And yep, we rode that way con mucho gusto. It wasn't dust, it was water. I forgot that my teeth were sensitive, but the cows made it better. Then we got to ride on this quiet, 27 mile long road all the way to Utah. After we found our campsite, some rain snuck up on us. It became a lot of rain. The tent was dry enough. We had our ramen, ham, mushrooms. The rain let up. And as you can see, we're literally set up right off the road. No one minds, and I love that. 93 miles today, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. 
day 10 of biking across the entire United States of America is complete. He's swatting at mosquitoes. I'm just getting bit. This is the Great Salt Lake in the background. Here's what happened. In the morning, we dried our wet tent on the sage, down some oatmeal, and headed downhill. 30 miles later, we skipped the Sinclair, went to the Flying J, and feasted on Flying J pizza. Some guy asked if we were the ones camping on Highway 81. We said yes. He said safe travels. We're trying out mayonnaise as a sunscreen. After that stop, we had the choice between a gravel road and the interstate. We chose gravel at first. It improved to kind of paved. There were some odd signs along the way, but we went right past and we were fine. Then we did a stretch of interstate, and it was also fine. It's illegal in most states, so don't recommend it. But it was legal here, and we didn't have many options. Off the interstate, some rain caught up to us, but we dried off by the time we got to this NASA facility where they make rocket fuel. For anyone wondering how we refill water, gas stations are awesome. Anywhere with a bathroom sink also will do. We got a little overwhelmed searching for dinner in a massive Walmart, but found some, ate it in the air conditioning. People stared at us, but that's the fun of it. We kept going, past all these pretty landscapes, ended up in our tent in a state park, and that was our day. 99 miles today, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. Day 11 of biking across the entire United States of America. Here's what happened. We woke up to birds that were chirping louder than our neighbor's music last night. Or maybe they were cheering us on because we're done with our first segment. 950 miles down, that's about 25% of the whole trip. I can't believe how many of you are joining in on this journey and I can't wait to share the next month of biking with you. The route into Salt Lake City was mostly trail. It was pretty much all trail, 40 miles of trail. We broke up the trail by getting lunch, which was discount zucchini bread, which was awesome, and Bolt House Farms. Then we hit some boardwalk before more trail. Salt Lake honestly has good bike infrastructure. I felt very comfortable. And at the end of all this yellow dash road, we found the second red iguana and our friends, Ryan and Adam. After some more biking, we found more friends, Brooke and Ben, and more food. Yes! After some laundry and showers, we're just winding down on the couch now. Recovery day today with 59 easy miles, some stats for the nerds, and that's a wrap. Day 12 of biking across the whole United States is complete. Here's what happened. I guess narrator Sam's dead. In the morning, we hauled their bikes upstairs, but as you can tell, Sam skips arm day. We hit the road, and then we hit the hills. At some point, we ran into a local guy named Marty, and he offered to guide us the next 20 miles all the way to Provo Canyon. Shortcuts, side roads, neighborhoods. He knew every turn. He is much better than Google Maps, let me tell you. We said our goodbyes at the start of Provo Canyon, then the climbing started. That's Brado Falls right there, complete with avalanche debris. It got pretty dark and windy for a while, but the storm passed before we got there. Some more climbing after Heber City, and then we saw the chain-up sign, which meant the climb actually started. It was steep, maybe 10%, 10.1 maybe. Made it to the top, cracked 8,000 feet above sea level, 8,020 to be exact. A little downhill into Uinta National Forest, and now we're set up, watching the birds. 88 miles on a day, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. This is what happened in our 13th day of biking across the whole United States of America. The morning was almost as crisp as our tan lines. The sun warmed things up as we packed and we did our usual thing, biking. Yesterday we climbed most of the day and today we descended down the other side of the mountains. Tons of smooth downhill. Utah nailed Highway 40. Before the tubeless people start commenting, we would both be on the side of the road with that puncture. Back to the downhill. I didn't realize the irony of lunch at Starvation Reservoir until my aunt pointed it out. Oh, that way. We had a tailwind most of the day. It was excellent. I tried to get a clip of the grass blowing. Why was there wind? Pressure gradients. Why were there pressure gradients? That storm behind me. It never hit us, but it sure made us bike a little faster. We're in eastern Utah now, camping on BLM land with a good view. 101 miles today at 16.4 miles per hour. Some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. Here's what happened in our 14th day of biking across the entire United States of America. We rolled out of camp slowly and hit Walmart. I told dad he couldn't buy two pounds of dehydrated carrots, so here's what we got instead. Off to the east. I'm guessing they don't get a lot of cyclists on this road, but the shoulder got bigger eventually. Did you hear that bird call? Another lunch with a view, plus some ants that like oatmeal raisin cookies. They were moving so fast. After some more biking, we hit colorful Colorado. The city right after the border is dinosaur, and we celebrated with some Ben and Jerry's. The clouds look sweet. Wait, they look dark. Yep, it started raining. And that's okay. Even in the rain, the roads were so smooth. 
smoother than a baby. Another downhill sign. I hit 44 miles per hour on this one and survived. We set up in a wildlife area and now we're in the tent staying mostly dry. 95 miles on the day. Some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. Here's what happened in our 15th day of biking across the United States of America. Today was probably our toughest day yet. After saying goodbye to our campsite and a bit of biking, nothing beats breakfast dogs and my dad's first tornado. The sky looks nice from this angle and a lot darker from this angle. Wait, let's zoom in on those legs. Construction plus downhill is kind of fun and it was pretty bikeable and the workers were friendly. These dark clouds do not give up. We found a good spot off the highway for lunch and Bryce recognized us and said hi. These guys are killing it. <laughs> Keep on rolling. We rifled through rifle Colorado, but both of us were feeling low energy. And then the clouds came back again. Ride or wait? We waited and then we battled more headwind until more storm caught up to us. Maybe it was a mix of things, but morale was pretty low. Some pizza to fix that. Look how big these hills are getting. We had to go on the interstate for a bit, which was fine. And then we ended up at Culver's, straight from the homeland of Wisconsin. Guess what? More rain. We pushed through it, and now we're clean and dry, thanks to warmshowers.org and Greg. 84 miles on the day, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. Here's what happened in our 16th day of biking across the United States of America. Today was two days of stuff packed into one. We said goodbye to Greg and resupplied scones. Glenwood Canyon has a bike path, which is insane. That's the interstate right there. Just an FYI, the path is closed from Shoshone to Bear Ranch, so plan accordingly. Does anyone think my dad skips arm day? I went under. If you're in Gypsum, Colorado, say hi to Gracie at Gracie's Coffee Shop. She's really nice, and the coffee cake was so good. Things flattened out for a bit, but not for long. I like this, and I also like tunnels. Gino ran into us and took a pole, a quick pit stop, in Vail, then we hit Vail Pass, 2,000 feet up over 11 miles. This was the highlight. Some light rain the whole time, but the trail's just perfect. Smooth, no one else. There was this crazy steep part though. I think that's copper in the background. We're pretty high in this picture. Elevation and endorphins. Our hands were freezing on the way down, but it was beautiful. A plus to the Vail Pass people. Some food, and now we're stealth camping near Frisco. 93 and a half miles on the day. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. Here's what happened in our 17th day of biking across the United States of America. Mid 30s in the morning, so we were wearing everything, but that doesn't include waterproof gloves or waterproof shoes. It rained for the first 30 minutes of the ride, so we stopped at an REI and debated if we should even climb the other 3,000 feet to the top of Loveland Pass. But we ended up buying thicker gloves, bagged up our feet, and sent it. The rain stopped at some point, and the ride was great. There are bike paths all the way to Keystone, then Highway 6 all the way to the top of Loveland Pass. A base and cheered us on. It got pretty toasty. 40s and sunny. Half a mile up over nine miles, but we had a good rhythm. I can't tell if these are sheep or goats. Lots of snow as we cross over the continental divide. Tons of downhill. We just zipped and zipped and zipped. This tail went up too. Lunch in Idaho Springs and more downhill. We ended up somewhere we weren't supposed to be, so Stephen gave us a ride eight miles down the road. The bikes fit and we're getting good reassembly. Cross through the Denver Metro, dinner with the Voss family. Hi Luca and Bodie. Hey. Now we're getting ready for bed at the Perry's. 86 miles on the day. Some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. Here's what happened on our 18th day of biking across the United States. Father's Day edition. Perry's left us some scones bigger than our heads. Rest day and coffee with Alex. New chain because mine was getting stretched. Some spring cleaning. Reminder to drain your frames, people, and some more spring cleaning. We dropped a good amount to get sent home. 3 p.m. start toward the plains of Colorado. It's nice when we can lean our bikes against things during breaks. Alex joined us for 20 miles, then we cranked out another 21. Especially with the rest days, our bodies are feeling ready for another 2,000 miles. We set up at a church lawn, and the pastor took us to Carl Jr.'s. He was a happy man and told us everything about the area. 41 miles on the day, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. We have been biking across the United States for 19 days now, eastern Colorado, battling a headwind going uphill. Today started with the usual packing and then we headed off to the east. It's getting flatter than a stretched out slinky. They got a ton of rain here. We found some good back rests and then feasted for lunch. I probably ate 2,000 calories, cinnamon rolls, chicken, turkey sandwiches, bolt house, so much food. 
We're also taking breaks every hour and trying to eat as much as possible. At this point, we cannot overeat. We got to this quiet gravel section and didn't see a car for 30 minutes. Lemonade and water stop at this restaurant and some guy told us that the mountain snow melt hasn't even hit the South Platte yet. Slushy break and then 12 miles of headwind and a slight uphill all the way to our campsite. I like how the grass looked. We just saw this road on Google satellite view that didn't look like it belonged to any person, more like a telephone company. 105 miles on the day, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. This was our 20th day of biking across the United States. This little guy helped us pack up the tent. The flapping of my dad's jersey is a bit of foreshadowing. The wind wasn't strong, five to 10 miles per hour, but going through it all day it was soul sucking. Cheese curds and cheesecake can only do so much. We're both kind of sleepy today too. Here's a house that went past us. These grain elevators are massive. We had our classic lunch of peanut butter and honey tacos, then more riding. Welcome to the breadbasket of America, corn. The wind kept up, but a single downhill and uphill was rejuvenating. Sections with trees like this blocked the wind, but they never lasted long. Recovery meal at the hut. We need to get mentally ready for the headwind the next few days. Now we're waiting to stealthily set up our tent in town. 83 miles today, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. Currently in Indianola, Nebraska. My dad and I are biking across the United States. This morning we loaded up and guess what? Started biking. If you've been following along, that's probably not a surprise. It's still silly windy like yesterday in the plains, but we're getting used to it. We hit the hills of Nebraska, which was a good change. This is called the Little Grand Canyon. Are people wondering how we're charging our things? Found an outlet at a park where we're taking a break. We lost an hour today, but that means we're moving forward. This shoulder tested our skinny skills. I still hit the rumble strip. We had this massive park to ourselves for lunch. The towns here all have similar main drags. Would you rather have fresh asphalt with a headwind or a bumpy road with a tailwind? Cool rope. Tune in tomorrow to see what type of Twizzlers we picked. Our feast from Wally World. Wide shoulder in the last 10 miles, and now we're in the tent listening to thousands of mosquitoes outside. 76 hard earned miles today. Some stats for the nerds. Oh, that's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States on this rough road on this beautiful day. We're almost to Minden, Nebraska. The stealth site this morning had room for improvement. Everything was wet and mosquitoes loved us, but that didn't stop us from another day of biking. There wasn't a strong headwind today. US 34 headed east all day today. Snack break with our rainbow twizzlers. And hit the spot, but B rating. Name something more Midwest than rolling hills in the country. We hit another buttery section. They literally just paved the shoulder and we couldn't ride on it because it was too hot. Cool to see all the construction. ATL, yo. We stopped there for lunch and dried everything. These farming operations are incredibly massive. The afternoon showers hit us. <laughs> but at least there were trains. And it started pouring and the shoulder looked like Swiss cheese, but we were close to this lovely campground. Now we're fed, showered, and happy. 85 miles on the day, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the US. Peep his tan lines. We're almost to Lincoln, Nebraska. Every morning we get up, get rolling, and time passes super quickly. I love biking. We're usually drafting and switch off every couple mile markers, taking breaks every hour-ish, and right now there's a Casey's at every break. I got pretty toasty today and think my bibs look goofy from the back. The sky feels bigger when there aren't any mountains. I'm surprised we haven't gotten pulled over for distracted biking. My dad did get a speeding ticket on his bike in college. We were too early for the Sutton Fair, but there was still a good park for a lunch break. A crosswind blew on us for a good while. Ice cream stop at a different Casey's. A dollar general dinner of turkey sandwiches, a bit of a tailwind, and a gravelly road to get to our stealth site tonight. Now we're sweating in the tent. 102 miles on the day. Look at how many turns we made. Some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. We're biking across the U.S. We're still in Nebraska, but on the other side of the Missouri River is Iowa. Even the ticks at our stealth site couldn't stop us from biking today. Pass on the roller dogs, yes to the biscuits and gravy. What has many ears but cannot hear? It's not this thorn that popped my tire. Quick patch and then we made it to Lincoln. The roads here have zero shoulder but the bike infrastructure is pretty good. We cut through the whole city on trails, probably past a hundred parks. More hilly today and we also stopped at five Casey's I think. Yes, their pizza is good. A shade break and then the best road of the day old US-2 into Nebraska City. Smooth, quiet, rolling hills. Plus, we had a tailwind. It's my brother John's birthday, so wish him a happy birthday, please. 
when in Nebraska. Now we're at camp, drying out some wash, 91 miles on the day, some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States and we're currently stealth camping outside of Diagonal, Iowa. The crosswinds almost blew us into the Missouri River this morning, but we made it safely to Iowa. Breakfast buffet, then gone with the wind. 20 mile per hour tailwinds on some crazy flat open sections. It didn't stay open or flat today. Hills, hills, hills. A slight headwind when we turned to the north, then zooming when we turned back east. We got our fix of gravel too. I mean fixing a flat tire. Clouds, A plus city park in Clorinda, Iowa and more gravel, landscapes, and hills. We climbed as much as when we were in the mountains. Almost as good as Bolt House. Thankfully, it wasn't as hot today. Now we're watching the fireflies and washing our pot. 96 miles today, some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. We're eating ridiculously portioned Mexican food in Albia, Iowa. The morning was lovely, dry, and sunny until we came upon this sign. It wasn't a problem though because we were just able to bike around. There's still a good amount of rolling gravel, but there's something euphoric about switching from gravel to smooth pavement. South Central Iowa is still pretty hilly. Our legs don't really notice, it's more our heads. Lunch stop at Patty's, bike. Snack break in Garden Grove, bike. Our only Casey's stop today, and then we kept on rolling, just like this train. Highway 34 East wasn't fun, more traffic, small shoulder, and then no shoulder, so we rode in the gravel to avoid the semis. We made it to the High V in Albia, got food for the next two days, and then dinner at a Mexican restaurant from across the parking lot. 99 miles today, some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. My dad and I are currently biking across the United States. We're in Iowa right now, off the side of the road where we're gonna pitch our tent. Pretty morning, but we left quickly because the spot was sketch. I was middle school B team, second string. We left all beyond a quiet, bumpy road all the way to Ottumwa. The city of bridges, except for the bike trail bridge apparently. A cyclist named Beth helped us reroute and we went on our way to some gravel and smoke. This from the Canadian wildfires. We ended up in some uncharted territory. Just checking out the corn. But made it to lunch in Batavia, then more bumpy back roads. Fresh gravel is tough. Was this bridge really closed? No. Calories by Casey, then some more riding, then dinner. Noodles, tuna, cauliflower. A couple nearby saw us all the way out in the country and offered us their yard, so now we're there sipping fresh iced tea. 73 all-terrain miles today. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. We rode five hours today to Muscatine, Iowa. My mom drove three to meet us here, and I have a toad. Can you believe that we've ridden all this? It rained last night. We said goodbye to Mark and kept on rolling. Only gravel and a bit of rain and a bit of dog. Things were quiet today. The roads were smooth and the Casey's were numerous. I love these abandoned farm structures. There's a fundraiser for the Rails to Trails Conservancy in my Instagram bio right now. They help make rec trails across the US and make the outdoors more accessible. A bit of crosswind took us over the Iowa River to our first downhill sign in a long time. I should buy one for the house. Some more riding on the Mississippi River Trail took us into Muscatine, Iowa. My mom drove down from Wisconsin to meet us so we could say, Look, Mom, I'm on TV. You can find the whole interview on KCRG.com. I think it's been in his head to go across the country, and the timing just really worked out this time. I have a helmet strap tan line. We showered for the first time in a week and ate good in the neighborhood. Now we're hanging out in a hotel, 66 miles today. Some stats for the nerds. Oh, some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. My mom met up with us. She drove down. We're in Illinois right now. The hotel waffles were divine. My mom carried our gear today, which means we sped off 25 pounds lighter over the Mississippi River and into Illinois. It was actually really quiet until the wind picked up. The future cast looked hazier than the smoke in the air, so we picked it up a little. Then the tailwind didn't hurt us at all. We were ripping max gear on flats, which felt amazing. It got dark, Casey's still looked luminous. It seemed unsafe to ride, so we stopped at a park and ate cookies. Then my mom brought us sandwiches. The storm passed, but I still suited up. The roads are so good. My mom recorded this train for me. Was this road actually closed? Yep, that's a down power line. Detoured to an even better road because it was smooth, no traffic, and cows! We made it to our accommodation, now we're eating dinner. 115 big ones today. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap.
My dad and I are biking across the United States of America. We're currently in Eastern Illinois, camping in a city park. We started with breakfast, then said bye to my mom, then went over the bridge of the Illinois River. I really liked this one. Cars are so nice on quiet roads, which means we can twist and turn peacefully. Isn't it cool how trees grow around power lines? Try to count all the soybeans in the background. We made our own detour when we saw the bridge out sign, but we didn't detour far enough. We saw another road close sign, which means we had to detour for lunch. It put us close to a Casey's though, and you know what? Casey sent us Casey's cash, which means pizza. We met some guys from Germany going east to west, then kept on rolling. Try to count all the corn. Another stop at the Oasis, then more pedaling. Now we're hanging in the tent. Thank you so much to everybody who donated in this fundraiser. It means a lot. We did 97 miles today. Typical seven hours moving time. Here's some stats for you nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States of America. We're currently 70 miles into Indiana, headed east. We saw this on the radar at 5.30 a.m. and woke me up, which gave me flashbacks to Sunday mornings growing up. Half awake, we moved into the park shelter, then the rain came. I'd rather be sleepy than soggy. It also gave me some time to make a what we eat in a day video. It's on my page. We rolled out and found this old jail in Iroquois, Illinois. The mayor stopped by and unlocked it for us. Their park is very bike packer friendly. No smoke in the air today so we could actually see the storm clouds and at some point crossed into Indiana because the road surface changed and our GPS became this Hoosier tour guide that was too friendly. Surprise, surprise, another detour. Going over the interstate was probably our biggest climb. So flat today. A little gravel that led to Casey's General Store. Here's a cool bridge from earlier, and remember to always be down to loiter. Now we're set up off a wreck trail, ready for some rain tonight. 93 miles today. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the US. My friends Tim and Abby met up with us. We're at a very loud campground right now. We packed up our stuff from the bike trail and rolled out. That's gonna be a lot of bread. We found some rolling hills in Indiana, which took us all the way to this road close sign. Was it actually closed? Nope. It was actually peaceful, carless, and lovely. Definitely a highlight from this ride. We ate lunch outside a store and then kept biking. This was an awesome stretch of trails and it's also also part of Chicago to New York route from Adventure Cycling Association. And through all the biking, we had Casey's cash to use. Push-ups all day. From this angle, the weather looked gorgeous, but from this angle, it looked pretty hairy and windy. We took a break and then suited up, but it hardly rained. Just an FYI to the people in the area, it's black raspberry season. More bike trails southeast, some beautiful asphalt, and we made it to a campground and met some other cyclists. Tim, Abby, and Ellie also drove all the way here to see us. We're in eastern Indiana getting closer and closer to the ocean. 101 miles today. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. Tim and Abby joined us today and last night. The rain started this morning and would not leave us alone. We still rolled out, Tim included, maybe 45 miles of bike trail today. Good job, Indiana. And Ohio, this is us at the border. If you're wondering who took the video, it was John. He met us on the trail. Good job, Ohio. Plenty of quiet roads and some hills. Our butts are actually happier when we stand up occasionally. Tim and I used to ride when I lived in Madison, so it was great to get out with him again. Ellie has since replaced me. The day went by fast, all the bike trail and Tim probably. It got hairy in Dayton. We had our own version of Unbound 2023 and also got caught in more rain. This path along the Mad River is so nice. The drivers in Dayton scared us a bit, but the paths kept us safe. Was this trail actually closed? Nope, they were just doing some construction on the bridge and we made it to the other side. Now we're sitting around our first campfire of the whole trip, hanging out with Tim and Abby. 95 miles today. Some stats for the nerds. And that's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. We're almost done. We're in Columbus, Ohio right now. We said bye to Ellie, Tim, and Abby this morning and then did some more biking. What else would we do? It was great to see a ton of people on the trails for 4th of July. So we celebrated with our friend Casey and a slushy. For the last time, no more Casey's farther east. Bike trail for the whole day has some drawbacks. Fewer hills, slowing down for things, but the brake spots are very good. Plus you only have to care about cars at the intersections. 
After our only hill climb from the entire day, we weaved through some more bike trails and then we weaved through the Columbus Metro. Tacos and ice cream with Bailey and Matt. Great hosts. Now we're getting sleepy in Matt's apartment ready for another day. 66 miles today. We had some big days recently, so this was a good rest day. Some stats for the nerds, so flat. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States of America. We're currently in Eastern Ohio. Here's what happened today. We left Matt's apartment in Columbus, and I guess I understand why most people don't live out of a bike. Quick in the grocery store and OSU, sorry Wisconsin, we ventured out of Columbus. Things felt sluggish today. I'm sure the heat played a role, but we kept on rolling. So close to the end, basically at the ocean. A break at a library and I had to remember how to use a computer. Then we capped the break off with frozen custard. I couldn't imagine walking across the country. Some more bike path until we hit this. We backtracked, had some lunch, and struggled to get the nerds open. Guess what? Another closed road! That's part of why today felt sluggish. Is anyone missing their giant picnic basket? We're getting back to some hills now and I am so ready for it. They make us use different muscles and keep the ride interesting. Bridges keep things interesting too. We're camping at a park tonight on this slow and brown river. 78 hard earned miles. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. We are about as far east in Ohio as you can get. Here's what happened today. We left our perfect site and headed off. If you could tell, today was a sweaty one. Left turn, obviously, off to the hills. They were twisty, too. The up-down plus nice traffic might have made this the best day of riding. Yep, definitely the best. The water from this gas station looked really gross, but natural spring water was divine. These hills were also divine. You know when you're sweating so much that it's dripping on your sunglasses so you have to take them off? Yeah, me too. It's pretty steep. This is probably a 12 or 13% grade. I gotta get ready to ride up Mount Washington in August. We rode past this ice cream shop, then Virgil recognized us and bought us milkshakes. His brother's the owner. Also, 4.9 stars, holy cow. More climbing and more downhill signs. New speed record today, a solid 45 miles per hour. We stopped at a restaurant to avoid some rain, hit some more hills, checked for ticks. Now we're enjoying sunset. 89 miles today. This is also the most we ever climbed. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. We're currently in Pittsburgh. Here's what happened today. A quick climb, then we rolled past a steamroller all the way to a downhill sign. We enjoyed it, but there's no such thing as a free lunch. Bolt House made a good lunch, and we had some more lunch, and this lunch was tasty. D. We took the stairs up to the walkway on this bridge because it seemed a little sketchy. This is the Ohio River, and this is West Virginia. Tons of traffic, but the left turn lane made space for cars to go around us. We only had 10 miles in this state, but those 10 miles took a little while because I broke a spoke. We borrowed a wrench from Mark to get my brake rotor off, and I was back on 24 spokes. Pennsylvania, baby. We liked the Panhandle Trail, well made. Google Maps led us into Pittsburgh and it pretty confidently said this was a road. I don't even know. An absurd amount of climbing up to some beautiful views. Ed Sheeran's playing at the stadium tomorrow. Supper than sleep. 62 miles today and we only managed five hours of riding time. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. We're currently in the western part of Pennsylvania. Here's what happened today. Some trails, bridges, and new friends to start the day. I love seeing old junk. We hopped onto the road and I give it a C plus for bikeability. Not a ton of shoulder and waves of traffic. These were the small waffle cones, but we needed all the help we could get for all of these climbs up ahead. We were three quarters of the mile up this 8% grade and my dad realized his phone was back at the gas station at the bottom. He dropped his bags and went on a rescue mission, crisis averted. A lot of this today. We smashed our total ascent record again and enjoyed plenty of descents through the countryside. Steep in these parts and steep climbs make food so fine. We found a sheets. Here's my review. Good music, sinks to fill up bottles, so many slushy flavors, and tables outside. 10 out of 10, downhill sign. 
a downhill sign. Another downhill sign, 14% max grade. I didn't film the whole downhill, but we have a new trip speed record I'll reveal at the end. Some more climb, some more descent, and now we're eating breakfast skillet and shepherd's pie. 92 big ones today, 7,300 total ascent. Some stats for the nerds, 48.7 miles per hour. That's a no speed record. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States of America. We're currently in central Pennsylvania. We left our 7 out of 10 stealth site and went through the secret tunnel and then off for another bike ride. These dark clouds sprinkled on us for a while, but we dried off. I like hilly downtowns. Riding on roads like this makes the day pass by so quickly. There's always something new to see and sheets. It was chaos for half a mile then back to quiet roads. A good old downhill sign, but we didn't break any speed records on wet roads. That would be irresponsible. We're at a point where this is sustainable. Our diet, physical effort, camp selection, all of it. We're doing it every day, and we know we can keep doing it every day. Meals from small shops hit the spot, but I think it would be pretty cool to carry more vegetables. I do miss my refrigerator, so this trip might actually have to come to an end. It'd be cool to have a season two though. We biked 90 miles. It's 6,000 something feet of gain, so very hilly. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States and we're currently in southeastern Pennsylvania. It's nice having a staging area in the morning. Some groceries, light shopping, and then we got on the road. Not a ton of shoulder, but cars seemed used to seeing bikers. Some more cruising, then we crossed the Appalachian Trail. I'm not sure if I'll find time to hike it. It's on my list. Lots of smooth roads today. This section was some top grade biking. Not too hot, not too cold. We went through West York, York, and East York to get to a... Rudders! Nobody told me about this place. They even have indoor seating. Rudders. Pennsylvania Bike Route S treated us well these last few days, but we're officially off it now. I had issues today with some drooping bags and also this nail that somehow didn't puncture my tube. We took a massive bridge to more smooth road to a bike path along the water. Really pretty few miles and I liked the islands out there. There was also an insane amount of raspberries. Buckets everywhere you look. Some more cruising and now we're hanging out in the tent. 99 miles today. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. My dad and I are biking across the United States. We're a little outside of Philadelphia. Gigantic breakfast and then biking. The trail disappeared, but the tunnels made it fun. Some rough single track that turned into double track. Double track for the win. And gas station sinks. We hit the road in Amish country. That means drivers were used to going around and giving space. We ended up on new chip seal, which was fine because it led to Wawa cold water options and self checkout, but zero seating. So I'm sorry, it gets a nine out of 10. We uploaded a video of our tan lines while we dried out our gear and then hit Delaware for a few miles. Traffic was wild. The bridges were wild and drivers were wild. None of that could stop us except stoplights. All that can stop us. We picked some berries with Lydia and now we're sharing stories with her, her dad Walter, and Jean. Walter and Lydia biked across the US last year. We rode just under five hours, 54 miles today. Some stats for the nerds. That's a wrap. And that's a wrap. You can guess where we are. We left Lydia's and weaved through Philadelphia. Today was probably our sketchiest day. Lots of open car doors, but kind of nice. I like it. It reminded me of Chicago. We channeled our inner Washington and crossed the Delaware. Stairs are tough, but cookies are soft. Still no real bike infrastructure in New Jersey, but they have Royal Farms. To wrap up our tour to gas stations, they have options, cold water, indoor seating, outdoor seating, and a giant chicken. One of our favorites of the whole trip. An inch of shoulder appeared on the smaller roads, which I didn't mind one bit. Our final picnic in a park, and then the final stretch of riding. Mother Nature made us work for it, but rolling into the city was surreal. We're seriously done. This is the end. My mom and uncle were waiting for us on the beach, and then we hit the Atlantic Ocean. These things somehow took us 3,600 miles through 13 states. We celebrated with some kombucha in the hotel room and a good dinner. You all have made this trip crazy awesome for us. I'm riding across the U.S. with my dad starting at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Learning about your cities, getting recognized, good laughs. <laughs> Seriously, thank you all. 83 and a half miles today, not much climbing. Some stats for my nerds. Thank you guys so much. There's much more to come.
thanks for watching. The response to this trip was honestly life-changing, so I hope that you enjoyed this recap video, and I'll be posting daily or weekly on TikTok and Instagram still. I'll be posting more regularly here on YouTube. Give it a subscribe if you'd like. Follow me on the other platforms if you'd like. That's a wrap.